Hey, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about the things that you need to know or do before you bring your puppy home. So I'm going to be doing a series of puppy related videos and I will be using the puppy Max. This is Max. And he's going to be the little star in this series of videos so I hope you enjoy it and get to know Max and how Max grows up throughout this series. This is the first video and I'm going to be talking about things that I suggest that you have before you bring your new puppy home. First, I think it's important that you get to know the breed of the dog that you will be adopting or purchasing or bringing into your house. This isn't always possible and most dogs are actually mixed dogs. If you do have a purebred dog, then that's really easy. You can really get to know the breed. If you have a mixed dog, you usually know one or two breeds that maybe is the best guess of the shelter that you're getting it from or the owner or you should at least know what the mother is or have a guess of what the mother is. So just do your research and get to know what the breed is like. All breeds can be a little bit different. Look into what that breed was originally bred for and that will give you some tips into the personality or the behavior of your new dog. If your dog is a mixed breed, look up the few breeds that are the best guess. It's good to have some background knowledge on what breed your dog is so you know the types of behaviors that your dog will enjoy doing or can doing maybe things to avoid or get some insight into what you can expect in the future. For example, if you have a herding dog, then you know that nipping might be more of a problem, something that you need to deal with if you have, say, a healer or a cattle dog or terrier, then you know the types of behaviors that they're going to have if they're going to be more prone to barking or whining. Digging. Of course, all dogs are different, but I have found that dogs are pretty typical for their breeds. Even mixed dogs, you can see the different breeds in them and that personality come through. At the same time, you also want to learn a bit about, if you can, learn a bit about where your dog's coming from, what the parents are like, their health, the people who are taking care of your puppy before you bring it home. Not all of this is possible, but try to find out as much as you can. Ask all the questions to whoever you're getting the dog from. Next, you're going to want to do some research on positive reinforcement training. Training is really important and not just when your dog is a puppy. Training is a lifelong thing, something that you are going to be doing forever and you really want to use reward-based training, positive reinforcement training over other types of training. So do some research on that. Training is important for the body and the mind of your dog Training provides enrichment, cognitive skills, exercise, enjoyment. Dogs enjoy training. It's fun for dogs to learn new things. Training also really strengthens the bond between you and your dog and builds a really good solid relationship and foundation that you will have for the rest of your dog's life. Learning and experiencing new things should be consistent for our dogs at all stages of life, whether they're a puppy or a senior dog. It's important to always be providing variety and enrichment in your dog's life and training is a really great way to do this. Just a quick overview of what reward-based training or positive reinforcement training is. Positive training uses rewards as motivation. Rewards can be playtime, they can be treats, they can be scratches and cuddles, anything that your dog really enjoys. And this type of a training avoids all punishment. It avoids fear, it avoids physical correction and intimidation. So there's no force involved and there's no pain involved. This type of training considers the animal's perspective and the animal's point of view. It develops your dog's confidence and self-worth. It develops your dog's self-control and you grow and strengthen your relationship with your dog through building trust. With this type of training, you also are going to need to really pay attention to your dog's body language and understand what your dog is trying to communicate to you. 
basically you're offering rewards which is something that is motivating for dogs something that your dog is really motivated by this can be verbal praise food or toys and whatever you find that your dog is really motivated by you're offering these rewards when your dog does a behavior that you want your dog to continue doing when your dog does a behavior that you like and you ignore behaviors that you don't want your dog to do. With this type of training, you always set your dog up for success. This means that you keep commands short and simple. You say commands only once. You don't want to be repeating these commands like, come, come, come. Instead, you just say, come and wait for your dog to respond. You are very consistent and you reward immediately after your dog does something, right when the behavior that you want is performed. Training is ongoing, it's continuous, it's all day, it's all the time, it's not just during sessions. Basically, with training, your goal is to encourage your dog to do behaviors that you want them to do. Encourage desirable behaviors and reduce undesirable behaviors. Your focus is to reward good behavior and your job is to help your dog understand what behaviors you want your dog to do, what behaviors are good, by rewarding them, praising them, giving them attention and affection, and you make training really fun. Keep training short so you have little short sessions that are ongoing throughout the day, so even as short as five minutes, especially with a puppy, it might even be shorter depending how young your puppy is. Over time, you once your dog learns a skill, you gradually decrease the rewards, but throughout your dog's life, you will always be rewarding their good behaviors. You just won't need to do as frequently as you do when they are a puppy or when they are learning something new. When your dog does something that you don't want them to do, you ignore it. But that isn't always possible. Sometimes you need to stop your dog. So instead of punishing them, and punishment can be attempting to influence their behavior by adding something unpleasant or undesirable or something your dog really is uncomfortable with, doesn't like, is painful or annoying. So instead, that is punishment. Instead of doing that, you distract. So if your dog is chewing on something, you distract them, give them something else that they can chew on, that they're allowed to chew on. So if they're chewing your slipper, you give them a toy that maybe is soft like a slipper, but they're allowed to chew this. So you distract and you ignore the behavior that you don't want them to do. So you redirect their behavior to what you want them to do. And then you reward that behavior that they are doing that you re redirected them to. So they learn that when I do this, good things happen they associate that behavior with good things and then they'll no longer do what you don't want them to do so that's just a little overview of positive reinforcement training for supplies that you want to have ready for your puppy there are a few things that you will need before you bring your puppy home or on the first night that you have your puppy i suggest having a harness instead of a collar to prevent neck injuries also of course a leash you can also look into getting a slip leash which is used for training a crate or a kennel, some sort of container that you can keep your puppy enclosed in and close the door, like a little den or a little house. Something like an X-Pen or a playpen that you can put your puppy in. Baby gates might be helpful if you can keep your puppy in a small room and block off areas that you don't want your puppy to access. A soft bed or blankets, a food dish and a water dish. A variety of toys, something soft, something rubber, something for teething, maybe a treat or food dispensing toy. Just make sure that these toys are safe for puppies. Puppy pee pads, a lot of treats, and of course their food that you will be feeding your puppy. In my next video, I will be talking about your puppy's first night home, creating a private space for your puppy, their own little safe area and crate training. I hope this video was helpful and you are really excited to bring your puppy home and start to build that bond full of trust and love with your puppy. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.